Hello YouTube, my name is Daniel and welcome back to another video. In these next set of videos I'm going to be creating a Pokedex app on Android. So this app will show you the basics of handling network requests, local storage and also a bit of dependency injection on Android. This app will also show you how to lay out your code using MVVM principles. So first off with this app, we have a list view here, which has a list of Pokemon, which we fetched from our API and then stored in our local database. You can search this list by using the search bar. So you can see this is now filtered the list for Pokemon that begin with these characters. You can also filter it for type of Pokemon as well by, click, by clicking on this um, button here. So if we just refresh the search view and then click on the type and click on the plant type here, it will then filter all the Pokemon on the list for just the plant type. On the main screen, I also have two buttons here. The first one will take you to a map screen. Now the map screen is a map of the Pokemon world and for all of the Pokemon that we have saved in our database, it will then plot them on this map randomly. So this is just a, a little way of displaying the data that we have in our DB. And on the other button, this will just take us to a list of our saved Pokemon. In order to save our Pokemon, you just need to click on one of them on the list view. This will bring up the detail page, which will show a list of all the abilities of the Pokemon and also a image of the Pokemon and also the star count which is taken from the average of all of their stats which is down here. It will also show a little mini map with the last loan location. This is just done by random and then we just can save the Pokemon here. Once that's saved we can navigate back to the list view and then click on the button here and we can see that we have this saved Pokemon. This can then be deleted by just clicking yes here after clicking the bin image. We can also delete all the saved Pokemon by clicking on that settings icon. And that will delete all the saved Pokemon. And then when we come back to the list view, there is also another feature which just has a swipe to refresh. And what this would do is just call the API and see if we have any new Pokemon and then just add them to the list view. This app will also show you how to do pagination with a recycler view. So when we scroll down to the bottom, we can see it here, it's refreshing and looking for new Pokemon, and then it will add it to the list. And you can see here it's now added those Pokemon. So that is just a quick demo of the app. Now we can start getting into the code. All of the code for this app will be in the description in a GitHub repository. So make sure you go ahead and download that repository and also create a new empty one where you can start building this app and try it out for yourself. So firstly, once you create an empty Android project, you want to add the drawables, the fonts, the layouts, and also the colors, diamonds, and strings into your project from the GitHub repository. I will go through these briefly now, but I don't want to spend too much time on them and would rather get with actually building the app. So with the drawables in here, we just have the icons and images that we're going to be using in our app. We then have the fonts, which is pretty self-explanatory, just the Pokemon fonts for the main screen and also for the card. Then we have our layout files. I'll go through those in a moment. The navigation graph, we will start filling in once we've actually created the fragments. Um, for the colors, just got the colors that we'll be using throughout the app and then the diamonds which is certain values that we'll be using for padding and text sizes then we have the strings and finally we just have our theme file we also have a custom splash theme here which is a way of setting up a splash screen without using a separate activity I will go through how to create that as well so now going through the layouts firstly in the main activity we just have a frame layout and our fragment. This will be our fragment container and it's just the main hub for our app. So the fragment container will house all of our fragments 
and that will handle all the navigation. Next, we have the dialog type filter. And this is shown when the user clicks on this little icon here, and this will filter the list of Pokemon. For this layout, we just have a linear layout and then three image views, one for the grass image, the water image, and the fire image. We then also have a text view saying search Pokemon by type, and also a button just saying cancel, which will dismiss the dialog. And next we have the detail page, which is the most complex view for this app. So this uses a relative layout, and this is because we can easily add other views to this layout, such as other images or the text views for the abilities, depending on what they have. And we can also add these dynamically. So firstly, the, we have the relative layout for the card. We then have a button, which is for saving the Pokemon, and this is aligned to the bottom. We then have a frame layout for the map view, which is at the bottom of the detail view. I'll just show you that here. So this is a frame now here, and inside there we have the map image. We then have the actual image for the Pokemon, which has a background of this silver gradient. And then we have the fragment star container. So this is a container for the stars of the Pokemon, and these get added once the view is loaded. And underneath that, we have a few linear layouts, one for the stats, which, con which contains all of the stats for the Pokemon, and then another container for the abilities. And then finally, we just have the last known location container, which is this here. And then we have another linear layout just showing the last known location text view. And then finally, we have the abilities container, which is just a container for us to add more text views for the Pokemon's abilities. Next, we have the list fragment. So first, we have an image view, which is just the Pokedex logo. I can just show you that here. Then we have a progress bar. And then we have a small view here, which is a linear layout. And this, um, and this view will actually stop the search bar being focused every single time uh, when they go back to the screen. So without this view, you would have like this text bar here every single time you come back to the screen and the keyboard would also come up. After that, we have the progress bar just to show when we are searching for Pokemon. And then we have the text, which is actually the title of the app saying Pokedex. And this image view here was actually the filter image. And that is just this icon here, so the three lines. Then we have the search view. And just pay close attention to these um, values here, such as the query in, the focus form and the clickable um, attributes as well. So best thing to do for the layouts would just be to copy and paste them from the GitHub repository and then just have a quick read through just to, just so you understand how these layouts are built um, and what is contained within them. We then have swipe to refresh layout over the recycler view so the user can swipe the recycler view and then get new items from the API. Then our progress bar and this is the one that goes on the bottom of the list view and that is used for the pagination. We then have a circular image view for the Pokeball and that navigates to our saved Pokemon and then the map icon to navigate to the map fragment. So next we have the map fragment. This is just a constraint layout firstly with a title and another text view and then a frame layout for holding the map and also a progress bar. I'll just show you the code here. So firstly, it's the frame layout for the map then the progress bar, the text view, and then the logo text view, and then just a back icon. We then have the saved Pokemon fragment, which is again another list view, a title, progress bar, 
and also a settings icon which is just used to clear our Pokemon. And now we have the row items for our recycler view. So these are the actual cells inside the recycler view. So the first one is just a linear layer with a background and we give this a fixed height of, a, of 125 dp. Inside this we then have a card view and a constraint layout. Firstly this contains the image which is on the left side of the row which is used for the image of our Pokemon. We then have the card title which is the name of our Pokemon and then the type which is the type of our Pokemon. So you can see on this one here it's just um, grass. And then we have the save row item which is exactly the same only it has a delete icon in the top right hand corner. So that is everything for the layouts. In the manifest, you will need to make sure you add some permissions also. And these can be taken from the GitHub repository, but I'll just type these in now. So firstly, we require um, internet permission. And then we also need access network state and access Wi-Fi state. And this is because we are going to check for internet connection when the user loads the app and then display a message if the device currently doesn't have Wi-Fi or a cellular connection. And then once the manifest is created, we can then go ahead and create our packages. So firstly, we'll need a package for our, for our API and this will hold our retrofit interface. And then we will need a package for our local database. This will be using Room, which is a wrapper for SQLite. Um, I'll explain that more in the next video. But this package will be called Persistence. Then we need a package for our models, which will contain our data classes. Then a repository package. This will contain our main repository, and this will be where we fetch um, Pokemon from our API, store them in the DB, and this will be accessed by our view models to then retrieve those items and then return them to the view where they'll be displayed on the screen. Next, we need a UI package, which will hold everything to do with the UI. So our recycler view adapters, our view models, our activities and fragments. We can also move our main activity into the UI package. Then we also need another package for DI, which is dependency injection. And then finally, we need a package for our utilities, which we will call util. And this will hold helper classes such as our image utils, a resource class for returning data from an API, and also our constant values, which will be used throughout the app. So I'm gonna end this video here, guys. That was just a setup of the app and also an introduction to what we'll be creating in this course. So if you could join me in the next one where we'll actually start building this app, that would be great. As always, the finished code for this project is in the description. And if you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. Please like the video and please subscribe.